We have been using no fence virtual fencing technology since July 2024. So we've just completed our first full year using the virtual collars. And it has really dramatically changed the way that we graze our goats and utilize our land. We graze about 40, 45 goats and four horses on 50 acres of land that's mixed terrain. We have your sort of typical grass legume for high quality, intensively managed pastures, as well as a lot of this sort of browse land. One of the really interesting things about this technology is it enables us to use what would be considered marginal land, would even be considered marginal ag land, just marginal land in general. And that is what you see around you here. And this is actually optimal goat feed. They're natural browsers and like tall forbs and leafy vegetation. But as you can imagine, we were using net fencing and high tensile fencing for the last 25 years in our grazing management. And putting that fence up in this type of terrain is just really uncomfortable and awkward. So we would use browse to a more limited extent. There are whole areas of our farm that we didn't really use at all just because it was so cumbersome. And what's important about this is that it removes some of the obstacles of land acquisition for small farmers. One of the biggest problems small farmers have to get going is the cost of land. So if you can buy a piece of land, clear some trees, set up an agroforestry situation, and utilize these collars, you can be ahead of the curve in terms of the amount of investment you would spend otherwise in getting set up. So as a result of using this virtual fencing, we're trying to transition some of our land from grassland into more tall browse. We're doing some plantings of sort of native brush species and tall forbs and experimenting and seeing how that goes. So the plant that we've been putting in our pastures that I'm most excited about is this one here. It's called cup plant. This is a nursery that I started last year and seeds, what, the 9th of July now and just sort of look at the biomass that has been generated and the goats just go crazy for this forage. So I'm trying to put as much of it as possible in different browse paddocks. I'm using the nursery to dig up rhizomes in the spring and put it in various places. And what you see here is a bunch of chicory mainly. And then what we have here also is cup plants. There's also plantain, a bunch of native goldenrod and other species that the goats really are into eating. So as you see, this is sort of like, again, like a tall, dense thicket. Um, type of thing that we wouldn't necessarily want to manage for if we were having to use physical net fencing, but this has enabled us to really diversify what we're feeding our goats and what we're planting, and they seem to really appreciate this. It's an incredible amount of biomass that's generated from this crop, and they like eating so high off the ground, and it's very nutritious and really increases our milk production. So one of the key aspects to making this whole system work is the ability to move animals to and from pasture and through really varied and difficult terrain. And the key to that is having a well-trained dog. In our case, we always have two dogs. We've been using Border Collies for 25 years. I train them all myself on the farm. This might seem like a daunting task to actually get a dog and train it up, but it's absolutely possible and it enables us to move goats wherever and whenever we want in whatever terrain that we deem is best for our animals. And we can do it with pinpoint accuracy. So well-managed grassland is still our management plan. In this early spring and late fall, a lot of the browsy species are not developed or senescing. And so the goats do quite well on grass, usually for May and part of June. And then mid-September, October, we rely on high quality grass pastures as we have in the past. This is something that we used to try to push them through to maintain a good quality, push them through in the summer to try to keep it keep it down and regrowth to have nice regrowth and now we're transitioning them to spending more times in the heat of high summer into browse land and maintaining the quality of these grasslands by grazing horses and brush hogging or cutting hay and this serves a couple of purposes it keeps the grass really high quality for them to come back onto in the fall and it also really reduces the parasite load that they're exposed to because it's broken the cycle they see this grassland in the spring in the fall and they're on browse in the summer and it's help their overall health in that way as well. We started the technology sort of mid-grazing season, so we had a good baseline to compare our lactation curve from 2024 to our lactation curves in the last 
three years prior to that. We saw in July, August, and September about a 12 to 15 percent increase in milk production over our prior year's lactation curves. So that was a really significant benefit for us, um, and it showed that the goats were just consuming um, a lot of their preferable feed. And so this technology has really opened up new areas of our land, and it's making the goats happier, healthier. This is what they want to be eating, and so we're utilizing it more extensively.